Hey there guys, I'm Will and welcome to FP1. And today we've got the launch of Williams Formula 1 car for 2020. And they've come out and said that, oh, we've not changed too much, but I'm not actually so sure about that. So let's get straight into it then and start talking about the aerodynamic features on this car. Now, the support in the recent videos, I've said this a lot recently, but it has been fantastic. So thank you so much for all the likes, all the subscribers that have joined as well. Welcome to the channel. And yeah, I hope you're enjoying the content. If you guys have any suggestions about what you want me to do over the course of the main Formula 1 season, please let me know down in the comments below and I will get back to you on, well as quickly as I can and to as many of you as I can. But yeah, let's get straight into this now. So yeah, Williams came out and said, oh, we've not made that many fundamental changes. So I can't, looking at this car, I can't quite agree with them. I think they've maybe tried to play that down a little bit and maybe play down their chances slightly. But just looking from these initial renders and also images of the car now on track at Barcelona, there are a few things that are different. So let's start with the front wing. Now, they have changed this very slightly. So we've seen a lot of teams this year. Uh, going for that maybe more Ferrari style of front wing where the elements come to the end plate quite low down. Uh, that's just to push air on the outside of the tyres. Now Williams have, I guess, developed their higher design that was uh, used by half the teams last year a little bit. It's not quite as high as it used to be in 2019. It kind of comes towards the middle of the end plate, almost like a compromise between the two. So I guess you're trying to get air over the top of the tyres while also trying to push it around the outside. Now, is this front wing as advanced as some of the other teams that we've seen. So, say, McLaren, for example, had a lot more of a uh, complicated one. I think we can see this changing. Obviously, you know, Williams were last last year. They've been trying to push back now to the uh, maybe the rear of the midfield. I think that'll be their goal for 2020. So, the front wing not looking as complicated and as advanced as some of the other teams. There have been a few people saying that, oh, there's not as many elements. That's not quite true. There is an extra element there hidden in the black, which is quite hard to see on some of these images. Uh, it kind of stems off from the main plane a little bit, but uh, there it, that is that there. Now, the main thing we want to talk about the front wing is just past the nose cone. You can see that Williams have incorporated the McLaren scoop, I guess you could call it. I'll put a few images up of the uh, McLaren uh, now, which you can quite clearly see. It's almost like this plow-shaped um, piece of carbon that comes out of the uh, nose towards the uh, going towards the floor. Uh, and again, that's probably just to try and take that air and direct it into the uh, side pod areas and also the barge wood areas and into the floor as well. And we'll get to the floor in a little bit. That has changed slightly as well. Uh, but interestingly, we've not seen too many teams pick this up. Williams, I think, are the first team to have properly, properly incorporated this design into their car. Uh, so yeah, we'll see if it works for them. So moving to guys the mid section part of the car. Now look at these barge boards. They do look fairly similar to what we saw at the end of 2019 for Williams. We've got that boomerang wing, which obviously McLa I've talked about it a lot, but McLaren incorporated it into their design last year. And slowly over 2019, some teams began to pick it up. Williams were one of those teams and they've kept it for this year as well. Uh, there might be a few more flicks and pieces of aerodynamic uh, or a few extra aerodynamic components in there as well. Uh, it's a little bit tricky to see from the renders that I'm looking at at the moment. Uh, but we'll see if that develops over the course of testing. I have a fair suspicion that it will. The overall engine intakes look very, very similar to last year. Go slightly further back though. Just look at that rear packaging. And it's something that the, uh, that the teams don't do or well the teams do very differently in comparison to how Williams do it it's very very aggressive at the beginning and you see these weird slopes I guess you could call it uh, the, the way they package that Mercedes engine is a little bit different to how some of the other teams have done it um, looks a little bit strange I guess you could uh, I guess you could say but um, it has I, I guess it's developed a little bit from last year I'll put an image up of the uh, 2019 car at Abu Dhabi and you can see that it's very very slightly different just past that intake, I think it's a little bit more aggressive on that sort of slope uh, down as you move towards the uh, middle half of the floor. Uh, so yeah, we'll see if we'll see if that brings any performances with it. I guess. Carrying on, then looking at that engine cover, and you can see that uh, Williams have incorporated the bit with a larger shark fin this year. So towards the end of last year, they kind of incorporate that McLaren again S design of just like a little fin at the very bottom, but it's now turned to a full-on shark fin again uh, this year. So yeah, we said a lot. I think. Every team, as far as I'm aware, that we've seen so far have gone for this. Um, part of it, I guess, is down to the new regulation. That means the number has to be slightly bigger on the car. Uh, I, I imagine that they've just said, right, we'll just chuck the entire shark fin on them. Uh, the rear wing looking very Mercedes-esque in the way it's mounted. So looking at the two uh, swan necks, which for those that don't know, is basically the little uh, hoop components. I'll zoom in on it now. Uh, that connect the main chassis of the car to the rear wing. 
Uh, they look very, very similar to what Mercedes have come out with. Uh, there might be a little bit of a flick on them as well. I can't quite tell from this image. Uh, but if you do look at the pictures of the car on track, you can see that they have incorporated a different T-wing. Now, it's a two-element T-wing again. Uh, it's a little bit uh, more complicated in the shape, though, in regards to what we've seen from other teams. Uh, usually, they've just been, like I say, a, almost a coat hanger shape, to be quite crude about it. But this one, it's a, the geome geometry is a little bit more complicated. So, we'll see if that stays with the season over in Australia. Well, yeah. So, I guess the final thing to touch on, then, is the actual floor of the car. And if you're looking for this overhead shot that Williams have given us, it's actually really, really detailed, which is... Uh, nice and easy for us. Uh, doesn't seem to have changed too much from the end of 2019. Uh, now you can see you've got these uh, almost vertical or hor I guess horizontal uh, for the way we're looking at cutouts that go the entire way along the floor. I believe that might be slightly newer. It was added maybe towards the end of last year. Uh, but especially towards the rear tyre and the way those cutouts was angle inwards towards that rear tyre, that's fairly similar from the end of 2019. So, yeah, not too much to develop on there, at least that we can see now. Again, these are just the launch photos, so I imagine in testing, uh, and by the time we get to Australia, we might see a bit more complicated parts on that. But the really promising thing with this Williams is just the amount of sponsors on it. And a few of us were worried, obviously, they lost Rexona, they lost... Um, Orland as well, which was Robert Kubitz's main sponsor. So coming into this year, we were a little bit concerned that this car would be pretty bare in terms of sponsors. But that Rocket uh, logo is a lot more prominent than the car. I wonder if that deal has now a little bit more money involved in it. Uh, the delivery itself, I actually really, really like. There have been a few people comparing it to uh, toothpaste packets again. Don't think it's quite as bad as last year. I really didn't like last year's delivery, but this one I can kind of get behind. You know, I feel like Alpha Tori will always be my favourite livery of 2020, unless maybe Renault come up with something absolutely spectacular or Alpha, I don't know. But this does look really nice. It really does suit the Williams as well. Uh, and yeah, I'm, I'm a big advocate of it. But they were just my thoughts then on the 2020 Williams. So now let me know what you guys think down in the comments below. Do you think this could be the Williams that get, or the Williams car that gets the team off the back of the grid? Finally, hey, well, I, I, I hope the best for these guys. I do hope they can get it just a little bit closer to the midfield this year. I don't think this is going to be a car that will be fighting for maybe fourth in the title like they were maybe about half a decade ago. But I do feel like maybe these advancements could be what pushes the team just slightly further towards that maybe middle of the midfield pack. But yeah, that's all from me today. I will be back maybe later today or tomorrow with the next launch. I know Force India is supposed to launch as well today, so stay tuned for that one. And yeah, I will see you guys later.